Hello and welcome to the first FPGA Inside Out session. We will start this session with evaluation of a linear feedback shift register circuit, talk about reset and clock signals, then we will talk about sequential and combinational logic. We will discuss why shift register circuit of this particular configuration is useful for CRC error detection. And we also demonstrate how to convert it into parallel CRC circuit. This session will be presented in the human in the loop style. In other words, we will not only show how we are interfacing with the actual FPGA board, but also will provide synchronous real time visualization of FPGA's internal logic. Let's start. We will drive signals such as reset enable and input using switches on the FPGA board. We'll be toggling clock signal by pressing the push button. In our case, reset is more like a clear signal that brings all sequential logic to its default state. Let's raise clear signal and toggle the clock. We can see that after bringing the circuit to its initial state, all the registers contain ones rather than zeros. This might look unusual, but bear in mind that we will use our linear feedback shift register circuit for CRC checking, and we intentionally implemented its logic in such a way. Let's toggle enable switch on. Enable switch controls clock enable logic on registers. When clock enable is on, then on a positive clock front, a register samples value on its input and stores it. If clock enable signal is off, then a register simply retains its current value. We will be processing new input bit on every clock cycle, so let's just leave enable switch on. Let's feed some data into the shift register circuit and observe its behavior. While we are supplying input data, let's analyze how signals propagate through the circuit. Let's redraw the circuit in a way that sequential logic is visually separate from the combinational logic. In other words, let's put all the XOR gates and wires on the left side of the screen and all the registers on the right side. At the positive clock front, values on register inputs are sampled and presented on register outputs. From there, they propagate through the combinational logic until they reach circuit output lines and settle on register inputs. In the middle of the clock cycle, signals arriving on the input propagate through the combinational logic until they reach circuit output lines and settle on register inputs. This is a very generic visualization that demonstrates how signals propagate from registers to registers and also from circuit input to registers. We will see more specific signal propagation patterns through combinational logic later in this video. Now let's revert our shift register circuit back to its original form and explain how it can be used for CRC checks. Shift register circuits are famous for their ability to generate pseudo-random sequences, but our particular circuit has a very interesting additional property to that. At any point, we can take a pseudo-random sequence from its outputs, feed that sequence back to its input, and get zeros as a result. This property means that the same linear feedback shift register circuit can be used for generation of CRC sequence and for CRC error checking. Now let's demonstrate this concept by taking current CRC sequence from circuit outputs, feed it back into the circuit input starting with the rightmost bit. When we are supplying CRC sequence into the circuit, we are actually feeding exactly the same value that is stored in the last register. By doing this, we simply keep in the output of the first XOR gate law. Why? because XORing some value with itself always produces zero. On the other hand, keeping this net low means that on the positive clock edge, the first register always takes zero. These zero values propagate to the right of the circuit because remaining XOR gates are simply relaying values between registers without changing them. Why? 
because XORing some value with zero always produces that value. Now, after we have provided last bit of CRC sequence, we can see zeros on circuit output lines. It is worth mentioning that the configuration of a CRC shift register circuit is defined by a generator polynomial. In case you are interested, here it is. Now let's talk about ways of improving performance of the circuit. One way is to obviously run it faster with higher clock speed. Another way is to increase circuit's bandwidth. We can unfold our single bit shift register circuit into 2-bit CRC circuit that can process 2 bits at a single clock cycle. To do this, we need to separate registers from combinational logic, replicate combinational logic, connect instances of combinational logic creating bigger combinational logic net. These dots of the same color are connected so that signals from register outputs wrap around and feed back into the first level of the combinational logic. This way, the change at register outputs causes a ripple effect throughout all levels of combinational logic that propagates until signals stabilize at register inputs. The change on circuit input lines causes similar ripple effect throughout combinational logic until signals reach and stabilize at register inputs. We are not showing these propagation signal patterns throughout the whole video because we just simply assume that signal propagation time through combinational logic is zero. Another excuse for not doing this is that in this session we are more interested in functional visualization of the circuit that does not take any propagation delays of the gates into account. Now let's feed the same data that we fed into one bit shift register circuit earlier. We start with reset and feed the data. At this point, we can observe the same CRC sequence as before at the output lines of the circuit. Let's feed this CRC sequence now. and observe zeros on circuit output lines. Now we have demonstrated that 2-bit CRC circuit is two times more efficient than 1-bit circuit as it can process two bits of input data per clock cycle. Using this approach of unfolding single-bit shift register circuit, we can create a parallel CRC circuit that can process any number of bits per clock cycle. In practice, it's important to keep in mind that more complex combinational logic are going to run at a lower clock frequency. So just consider this method as an opportunity to trade off the complexity of logic against its speed. This is it for now. If you would like to replicate this simulation yourself, please check for additional information in the description of this video and thanks for watching.